Hey guys, before we kick off today's video, I just thought just before we started, there's something that I probably should do more often on the channel, but I don't. Uh, and that is uh, asking you guys if you are enjoying the content to obviously like each video that you like and to hit the subscribe button. As I said, the subscribers help me grow, helps the channel grow, helps me develop. Uh, it doesn't cost anything. Also by hitting the bell notification, you'll be alerted to when I upload. At this time of year, I'm doing once a fortnight, uh, but once we get back into summertime, I'll be doing weekly uploads once again. Anyway guys, we'll kick over to today's episode Okay, well I had planned to actually do a spraying video this morning, but unfortunately since setting up the camera and doing all that sort of stuff, uh, the breeze has picked up and rule number one, if there's a breeze blowing, uh, we don't be spraying. So I thought I'd sort of turn this video into a little bit of a more of a walk around tour of some of the weeds I've got in this yard here, and I have got quite a few. Reason being though, uh, a lot of my backyard particularly, excluding things like the buffalo patch and the green, it has not been... Um, I guess touch since I built and it's still used as a bit of a dumping ground so I've got up the back I've got piles of uh, dirt and I've got piles of rocks and I've got just junk around that I'm using to build the front yard and as I come up through the backyard I'll sort of clean it up as I go and that's been the approach I've taken but anyway back onto this so I thought we'd have a look around see what sort of weeds I've got growing on around the place here and um, one of my biggest biggest uh, battles well not battles one of my biggest weeds at this time of year particularly uh, is this one here and this is burr medic and a lot of people at home will be thinking it's a clover and look you'd be excused for thinking that but what sets this apart from clover is a couple of things well particularly white clover I guess number one this doesn't get that white puffy little uh, flower head that you get on a white clover and this one doesn't tend to have the little stripe on the leaf but it has a yellow flower it has a funny little seed head uh, but the biggest the biggest clue to this being a, a medic not a clover is the actual the middle leaf on these three leaves here is on a little tiny stem of its own. So that will be the identifying factor to let you know that this is actually a burmetic, plus it creeps and runs. It's, it doesn't sort of clump underground like the clover can do. This one actually runs across the surface. Um, but look, again, this, this will be treated with a broadleaf chemical. Any of those ones, you know, your castors, your, cam your dicambers, uh, camberim, all that sort of stuff, bow and arrow, all that sort of stuff will knock this sort of stuff. But anyway, we'll go for a little wander around see what else we can find and I'll just point out some things to you and all these weeds unless I say otherwise will be treated by those main sort of go-to off-the-shelf kind of chemicals okay this little patch here this is a milk thistle so it has a little yellow flower a bit like a dandelion and when that flower finishes it actually it's a little seed head it'll burst open you can just see it there the little seed head uh, creates those little Santa Claus things and they fly off and deposit seeds elsewhere and that's why I've got a lot of milk thistle here and you can actually see here now why it's called milk thistle because when you break it off it has a milky uh, milky fluid or milky substance that will leak out of any area that's been sort of broken off there's another bit down in in there uh, so look again easily knocked over with one of your broad leaves but um, yeah this little bugger here is also good if you've got budgies or something like that uh, stick a bit stick a little bit of this in the cage for your parrots and uh, yeah they'll love it they'll go to town on this sort of stuff it's quite fine to give it to them uh, back in the day when I had a lot of birds uh, I'd hunt this stuff down and, and they'd have a field day munching on this so yeah good for that um, but not ideal for in your lawn obviously but yeah that's what it is this spiky little buggy here is a thistle some people call them bull thistles uh, and they've got really really spiky leaves so little spikes in the end of each leaves and they have one big long tap root. Now these little buggers, if you walk on one of those bare feet, you know about it. So uh, another one, again, all these broadleaf weeds are really, really easily treated with any of these chemicals. So um, now is a great time to do it. A couple of things, weeds are actively growing. So we've had reasonable good soil moisture. Um, we're not gonna apply any chemical if rain's likely to be had in the next sort of five to six hours minimum. Uh, and we wanna spray on a calm day, uh, when it's not suffering from stress of perhaps frost in the mornings or um, drought conditions. So a day like today is pretty good. We've had no frost, it's dry. It's just unfortunately a little bit too breezy for me to spray today, so it is what it is. Um, this area here of disturbed ground, so this area around me here used to be uh, a big pile of dirt. So obviously when I move this away, the disturbed ground is bare. It leaves itself open for seed to germinate and that's why we've got an infestation of sort of weeds and stuff through here. So. Uh, that's what's going on here that's why it's an abundance of weeds for me to share with you and something for me to hang my head in shame in but look it's a construction zone that's my excuse 
This little bugger here can be really persistent right down to even green height. And I reckon if I had a really good look over here in the green somewhere, I can see a bit there. I'll, you'll see it growing in a much more smaller form. So look, again, not a big problem for a broadleaf killer, but this here is Canadian flea bane. So it gets really long when left ungrown, single stem right up. Occasionally can do multiple stems, but generally one big stem. Uh, and again, has the little Santa Claus seed heads at the top. Blow away, disperse in the wind. Very viable seeds, obviously, once a windy day blows along. And these sort of take, take uh, root, I guess, or take hold in a favorable condition. They're gonna germinate really readily. And you can see all through here uh, proves my point in case. So that's the flea bane. We'll actually be able to kill two birds of the one stone here because here we've got two weeds. We've got the cape weed here. Now, cape weed is a, uh, a flat broadleaf weed and it spreads out over the ground in a wide way. And what it does is it actually tries to crowd out and mat out other weeds or other competition. So it comes up, then starts to spread out wide and it will get taller as it goes along. And that's its defense system on how it sort of creates itself a little home and keeps other people away or other weeds away, I should say. Uh, it doesn't have any spiky nature, it doesn't have anything like that. It gets a dirty yellow flower up on it uh, and it's a real pain in the bum. Look, it's known to invade areas that have been uh, disturbed. So what was once bare ground, you can see all around me here, this area has been disturbed because there's a big pile of dirt here that's now gone into this garden behind me. And what's going on with that is, um, now the ground has sort of got warm and there's seed in the ground, it's all germinated. So Cape weed, once again, really easy to control with a broadleaf spray. Uh, and the one around it is actually nice and green and tight and looks exactly like Bindi. It's got a fern-like leaf on it, um, but it doesn't actually get a spike on it. So what it does is, it actually runs across the ground, like a, I guess a, like a stolon sort of system, um, puts roots down as it goes along, but it's got a funny little flower, a little button, and that's where it gets its name, Bachelor's Button from. So um, you'd be excused for thinking it was Bindi. It looks a lot like Bindi, uh, but it's not. It's not Bindi, but rest assured, you'll be able to treat that stuff with your broadleaf killer, no questions asked. And it's, it's sort of, it can be fairly common as a turf weed, but yeah, so that's those two, Cape Weed and uh, Bachelor's Button. Unfortunately, one of the weeds that will not be controlled with a broadleaf weed killer here is onion weed, or some people call it Guilford grass. Now, comes up, gets a little seed head that pops up out of the ground, and it also gets a little purple flower. So, sorry, I should clarify that. The purple flower comes first. When the flower dies off, then the seed head forms. Uh, and then it basically works by having the seeds drop in around it, and in time, a new plant grows, forms a corm, which is like a mini bulb. So when you try and pull this stuff out by hand, you never get the bulb. So, of course, next time around, the bulb comes back. Now, there's some cultural things you can do to help this, uh, to help control this over over a longer period of time. So, regular short mowing, especially with the, with the catcher on, so collecting that because you want to try and get as much seed as you can, and consistently mowing low will eventually exhaust this plant. But it is a case of persistence beats resistance, so uh, it is a bit of a pain in the ass to have. But um, yeah, if you're persistent, you can actually control it. So. Uh, all is not lost. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything that is actually registered to um, control this. If I find something that's registered on a label to control it, I'll put it on the bottom of the screen. But off the top of my head, I cannot think of anything that um, is licensed to control it. Uh, maybe maybe something like a pre-emergent, maybe something like barricade or any, those sort of things, it might actually help. Might be a good idea. To, might be a good idea for me to try that next year. Um, you try a pre-emergent here, see if it actually suppresses it coming through. So that's the plan. We'll see if that works. Um, if you know of anything that's registered, chuck it in the comments below. But off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. In amongst my frosted zebra burnt, if you want, <laughs> cooch grass, and that's what this is. This is frost damage. Uh, we've got everyone's everyone's friend here, the power or the winter grass. Needs no introduction, I'm sure. Uh, there are things you can use, like winter grass killer and that sort of thing. However, probably for this sort of stuff, your best approach would be a pre-emergent. So uh, barricades and so forth like that. Uh, you could probably use uh, Oxifert, that sort of thing. This is a real invasive little bugger. You'll have one weed this year, you'll kill it off, you'll be fighting it for seven years. So um, probably best approach for something like winter grass is a pre-emergent, it um, would be my, my advice. 
Anyway guys, look, that was just a brief look around at some of the turf weeds I've got here. Um, I didn't show you every weed I've got because a lot of my weeds are also agricultural weeds and you're probably not gonna find those um, in the normal turf setting. So uh, I sort of just tried to pick out the ones that are most specific to uh, what you might encounter. Anyway guys, look, hope you enjoyed this episode. Have a great week. We'll see you here next time on the Aussie Lawn.